Good evening, cowboys, cowgirls, and outlaws. Welcome to the Slick Six Guns Network. I'm your host, Slick Six Guns, and I'm here to provide education, tips, and community for those interested in the Western shooting sports. If you're interested in stuff like that, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Now let's pack our wagons and see what's being discovered out west. Good morning, cowboys, cowgirls, and outlaws. Welcome to the Slick Six Guns Network Facebook page. I'm your host, Slick Six Guns, and today we are going to be talking about some pretty interesting topics. So I hope you guys stay tuned from wherever you guys are watching, and I hope you guys enjoy the show. As you guys know, I host these live streams every week. I try to. Um, and I also do some other videos and stuff that you guys are welcome to watch if you go to my different social media sites. So uh, I also want to let you guys know that this is basically meant for you to get to know me. Uh, it's a way for me to connect with my audience and it is also kind of social hour. So I hope you guys brought your coffee with you because this is coffee with Slick Six Guns so make sure that you guys have it with you. Today I have my local coffee shops brew from Mojo's Coffee. Um, just to let you guys know, it is one of my favorite places to drink. So uh, let me know in the comments section what you guys are drinking. It could be five o'clock somewhere, so I don't know what your time zone you're in or what part of the world you're in, but you could be hosting uh, anything from coffee to your famous uh, whiskey shot for all I know. So anyway, cheers. All right, before I get started, I have to go ahead and let you guys know that uh, you guys can always buy me a coffee if you want to for any of my live streams. I can always do a mention for you guys if you do that. Uh, the link is in the description. Go ahead and take a look. Also, if you feel like being a supporter of my channel or any of my content that I produce, feel free to go to Patreon as well. Now that that's out of the way, we'll go ahead and get into some of the content. By all means, feel free to introduce yourself in the comment section. If you have any questions of me at any point in time, I will try to answer those questions to the best of my ability. Uh, so uh, if you guys put it in there, and if it is something that you guys really want to know, I will try to answer it. Uh, but if I do not know the answer, I will let you know as well. Uh, this is not meant to be a history video, so please do not take it as that. I will try to steer away from fact or anything like that or anything from opinion. I am just merely going to show you some things that I have and it just gives us a chance to talk about them because you could be seeing them come up in one of the upcoming YouTube videos. So let's get started. Okay, so before we get to the main event, I have a few things I would like to show you and I want to talk a little bit about them. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is, can anyone guess what it is? It is a brass shotgun shell. Okay, um, this is something that I bought a while back and it is in 12 gauge, for those of you that know or don't know. It is uh, <clears throat> just something very unique that I have thought about getting. Uh, for those of you in the cowboy action community, a lot of you guys probably reload your rounds. And uh, let me know guys, what you guys think of the brass shotgun shells. I got them from Magtech. I plan on reloading them because I plan on shooting black powder out of my shotgun. Uh, so, and I also plan on doing my own reloading, which I currently don't do, but I will be doing it soon. I wanted something with a little bit more of a Western historic appeal rather than the regular plastic shotgun shells, so I decided to get one. And I thought that was something that was kind of interesting. It actually takes a different kind of primer other than a regular shotgun primer. It takes a large pistol primer right there. Um, you know, and you can load it with whatever shot that you decide to put in there, whether it be uh, buckshot or just bird shot. So I have the shot. I have all the components. I just need to put the thing together. And before you know it, I'll be shooting black powder here pretty soon. So anyway, let me know in the comment section what you guys think of uh, black powder out of your shotgun or if you have used these at all at matches or at any point during your uh, firearms uh, escapades. Let me know what you think. Um, I have yet to try these, but I think they're kind of neat. So let me know. Please do. Also, I want to let you guys know, as far as a few other things that are coming up, I'm working on an episode today that should be out of my YouTube channel. Um, but I am going to be doing an episode on this baby bear 
from Alamo Knife Works, Baby Bear Knife. It's got a nice sheath on it, very cool looking, very Texan looking. I must say, I do a quick review on it, and you guys can always check them out at LMOKnifeworks.com. Uh, they make some very high quality knives, and the owner there is a very good friend of mine. So, Mr. Brick, if you're watching, thank you. And uh, we look forward to doing our review on this knife, and the viewers, I'm sure, will be really happy to see that as well. So, that's up and coming. Let me know how you guys are doing today. I'd love to hear what everybody is doing. I know that you guys are probably at work, or you're probably out doing something. You never know. Um, <clears throat> you know, you don't have to tell me what you're doing. But uh, by all means, I know that everybody's busy in this day and age, and, you know, sometimes it's good to just take a break every now and then and just kind of enjoy watching your favorite TV show or doing your favorite hobby that just may be something that you're really into. So uh, let me know if you guys are doing something, if you're at work, if you're resting, if you're taking a nap for all I know. Just like to hear what my audience is doing out there or if you're drinking coffee with me. All right, before we get to the firearm portion of this, I wanna go ahead and let you guys know that all firearms have been safety checked prior to being shown on camera. I will still do it on camera for those of you who are range safety officers out there. Um, so we should be good with that. And also I don't want this video to get taken down anyway. So I would not do that to you. Uh, other than that, I am also gonna be talking about not only the firearm itself, but I'm going to be talking about why I purchased it and uh, enjoying just the, uh, you know, just having the aura of the historical significance about it. I'll tell you why I bought it. I'll tell you probably how much I paid for it. Um, I will probably tell you a little bit about uh, what I think about I'm going to use it for, if anything else. Um, you know, and I'll probably tell you if I've shot it or not. So I got a lot of things I'm going to tell you about this firearm because I'm really excited. Uh, this is a firearm that has known historical significance, and I will get into why. Uh, don't know who owned it prior, but uh, whatever they did with it, they must have done some stuff. So I will get into that here in a second. But uh, I'm sure you all are excited. And for those of you who are cult owners, let me know if you're out there. Uh, my Colt snobs, as I like to call you. Uh, don't worry. Don't be hurt. Don't slap me in the face. <laughs> Too soon for that reference? Okay. Um, just, uh, just know that I am a Colt collector as well. Uh, I have several Colt firearms, but this is one of uh, my more prized Colts. If you guys were watching the video last time, you'll, saw, you'll see that I had a Colt lightning rifle uh, in 4440. Feel free to check that out on the replay if you guys want to see that. That is a very interesting piece of history. It really is a piece of history, I'll tell you that much. But here is another piece of history. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here she is. This is my Colt Frontier Six Shooter. And I'm gonna go ahead, and even though I said it, I'm gonna unload and show clear so that you guys can see that it is unloaded. There you go. But here she is. This is not a Colt single action army. This is a Colt Frontier Six Shooter. So let's go ahead and first let me show you the firearm and then I'll talk a little bit about it. So here we go, Down, going down to the regular grips here. You'll see that it's got the horse, the, the rampant Colt on it, if you will. Going down to the hammer, it's got a nice patina on it. It definitely has some holster wear and it looks to be a five and a half inch barrel even though I haven't actually measured it. Going back to the other side here you'll see that it also has the Colt right here and you'll see if you can see it you have the brand right here of what type of revolver it is. It does not say Colt single action army it says Colt Frontier Six Shooter. Not New Frontier Six Shooter, or not New Frontier, Colt Frontier Six Shooter. Okay, going down to the front sight here, nothing's been shaved off to my knowledge, but that is the original sight. Okay, so 
let's go ahead and talk about this just a little bit. The Colt Frontier Six Shooter. All right. So the Colt Single Action Army is extremely famous because it is Colt Single Action Army and it belonged to being marketed towards the Defense Department, the Army at the time, and hence the reason why they called it the Colt Single Action Army. But what about the Colt Frontier Six Shooter? Where does that fit into this? Um, don't quote me on any of this. I'm going to give you a brief, a brief fact here, um, but I will say that it's just kind of interesting. Uh, the Colt Frontier Six Shooters were the civilian model of the Colt Front of the Colt Single Action Armies, and they are marketed to the civilian market. Uh, they are branded with Colt Frontier Six Shooter instead of Colt uh, Single Action Army, and to my knowledge, most of them started out in 4440, and this one is in 4440, not 45 Colt. So I think that's kind of neat. Uh, this is definitely an old piece. I have not looked at the date of this, but uh, you can see that it's been used. It does work, and it has the four clicks to it. You'll see that it's got the fixed firing pin. Hasn't been changed out. The screws on it are pretty well done. They aren't boogered up, except for the rear ones are just a little bit. I will say that on the older Colts, of all the older Colts that I've handled, I'll say that the grips on them are very, um, very smooth. Um, some newer Colts, like the third generations that I've had, the grips are usually normally a bit wider than this. So I would say that they are uh, a little bit thicker in your hand and they aren't as smooth to the revolver. This is definitely a lot smoother, I would say, to hold. Um, definitely definitely a lot thinner but then again also people back then were a little bit smaller too um, so I just think that's kind of interesting just just the different way that they handle and you know obviously even though they had interchangeable parts a lot of things were um, smith down to specific specifications sometimes for that revolver or that rifle by a master craftsman or something like that so you know you may have to do a little bit of fitting to put some pieces in there uh, in that specific revolver. It may not just be a drop-in fit. So I think that's kind of neat. Uh, just kind of goes to show you that every little, uh, every firearm um, had kind of its own little personal twist to it. So, but I just think that's really neat. So I'm going to go ahead and cock it again. It's four click, uh, just kind of like a regular Colt but it is definitely functional. It's got a little wiggle in the cylinder, but nothing I'm really too worried about. Definitely something for the age of this firearm seems about normal. Um, you know, and hence the reason why I got it because I wanted to get it because I wanted to shoot it. So let me talk a little bit about uh, some stuff that's kind of interesting about this revolver, other than the fact that it has Colt Frontier Six Shooter on it. It is in 4440. Um, something that I noticed right off the bat when I picked up and inspected this firearm is that it's got two nicks on it. If you can see, two nicks on the handle right there, uh, on the grips. And they're purposely put there. Uh, it doesn't look like it was any sort of damage to it. Uh, you know, we hear stories of what people did with their firearms from soldiers putting uh, nicks in their uh, stock of their firearm to show how many people they had killed or whatever whatever the story wants to be this definitely has some type of story that could mean two bad guys could mean two good guys could mean two animals it could mean anything but those were deliberately put there to show that two of something maybe face the business end of this revolver which is just kind of interesting, just goes to show more of a historical value to it. So I really like that. I think that's very awesome. And uh, that definitely drew a little bit of appeal to me. So if you happen to find a revolver like that, um, I definitely recommend it. Something that's within your price range, go ahead and purchase it. Um, the serial number is in the 316,000 range. Um, so I have not looked at exactly what year that is. Uh, if you guys want to put the year in the description, please let me know by all means. Um, 
and just to also show you that it is a Colt as well it's got the markings at the top kind of faint but you can still see it okay so it functions there there's some interesting facts on this revolver but also there is uh, some little uh, hiccups on it to show you that it's been used as well this revolver believe it or not even though it has an ejector rod the ejector rod does not 100% function perfectly and the reason why I say that is because I'll push it and as you can see I'm pushing it and I'm pushing it relatively firmly uh, but the ejector rod is not necessarily coming out the back so you normally you would see it probably eject to right about here uh, to kick out a spent casing but it's actually kind of stuck now I play with it a little bit and it might actually come free but I'm not going to um, what that means is that the ejector rod housing is actually slightly bent and in fact you can actually see it so I don't know if you can see it right there but it is bent a little bit it still functions um, you know if you play with it a little longer but it's just something to show you a little bit more character anyway other than that to my knowledge the function is just fine uh, which an ejector rod housing you know I'm not in a dangerous situation and I don't need to reload very quickly so I'm not necessarily going to need it immediately anyway just something kind of neat um, so if you guys are into collecting Colts Definitely a Frontier Six Shooter is something you probably ought to look at. Uh, judging by, you know, the appearances, I'd say that it is one of the first generation. Uh, first generation line of Colts. Uh, it still has a half moon ejector. Uh, so it doesn't have the black powder frame or anything like that. Uh, but it is going to be shot with black powder because I plan on shooting it with black powder. And if you got any reference to that, that means I have not shot it yet. Uh, so at least on first glance, it functions. So I'll say that. Um, I'm sure it functions just fine, judging by what I've seen so far. I have not actually taken this weapon apart, so I can't necessarily tell you if the internals are all original or have been replaced at some point. So just kind of neat. Um... So let's let's get into a little bit of the story, right? Why did why did I purchase this? Okay, well if you look at all the firearms that I purchased, I'm gonna tell you that I purchased them because I felt like it. Um, but why did I specifically purchase a Frontier six shooter? Um, you know, and how much did it cost you? Because I'm sure that's gonna be. On someone's mind why would I purchase a Frontier 6 shooter and why would I purchase a first generation well I have a third generation Colt and I have a third generation Colt single action army and I've shown it on this channel you guys can look back on it on previous videos that I have done it is nickel uh, plated as well so <laughs> Dakota said uh, Dakota Tidwell says before 1912 for sure can't find the exact year without the whole serial number on Colt on Colt's website. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you the serial number, and it is all matching. So the serial number is going to be 316,431. Okay, 316,431, if you want to look it up again. So you guys can take a look at it. All right, so pre-1915, pre-World War I, okay? Uh, but it is a Frontier Six Shooter. So, I do have a Colt Single Action Army. It is nickel plated. It is uh, made in the 90s. Uh, very nice looking revolver. Very well functioning revolver. Um, I would say that the hammer spring on it is actually lighter than this, surprisingly. Um, but I wanted to get something that was first generation. So, um, you know, I did have a second generation at some point and sadly I got rid of it because, you know, sometimes we get rid of some things that uh, we at some point don't really feel we have a need for and we have other things that we want to purchase. That was a stupid mistake by me and I got rid of it. So I will at some point probably purchase a second generation again, 
but I wanted a first generation as well to go along with the collection. So why did I pu purchase a Colt Frontier 6 shooter? Well, I had never seen one before. I knew they existed, but I had yet to see any of them marked on the barrel um, with the Colt Frontier 6 shooter. So I did. I saw that I saw that it was in the caliber that I have and that I reload for and thought, well, this would be awesome. I think I'll go ahead and purchase this because, you know, it's something different. It really is a piece of history, much like a lot of the other firearms that I purchase. I do purchase it for the historical value, and I'm sure you're just like that as well. So, you know, if it has a significant historical uh, value to you, and it seems like it functions, and it's in line with what you're eventually going to collect, then now you know why I bought it, because that's why. So, uh, you know, it has a unique factor to it in the fact that it is a Colt Frontier 6 shooter. And I just thought that a black powder 4440 sounded really awesome um, out of Colt's frame. So I think that's neat. So that is why I bought it. Um, historical value, the fact that I wanted a first generation, and the uniqueness of it being a Colt Frontier 6 shooter. Now, what I will also say is obviously Colts come with a price tag. So, you know, I'm sure everybody out there is kind of wondering, well, how much did you really spend on this type of thing? Hold on a sec. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments section, by the way, if you have any questions on this revolver or any other comments. Uh, perhaps there's someone out there that owns a Frontier 6 shooter, and I'm not the only one. I'm sure there are. Obviously, if they're in the 300,000 range, there's somebody out there who has them. Um, so, what is the price tag for something like this? Well, it kind of depends. Um, you know, the Colts, Colts are such an interesting piece that you find them in a myriad of prices. Um, you know, I've seen third generation for as low as eighteen hundred uh, to first generation as high as ten thousand. Um, obviously, that is going to depend on the condition, and you know, obviously, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and sometimes the price really doesn't matter. Um, so, I would say that if you are looking for a revolver like this, specifically a Colt Frontier 6 shooter, uh, in this type of condition, I would say that you're probably gonna spend upwards of uh, 4,000 for a gun like this, uh, specifically with the type of history that is kind of attached to it and the fact that it still functions. So, um, you know, that's kind of neat. So if that is something that you guys are willing to pay, which some of you are, some of you aren't, that's okay. Um, yeah, okay. Well, it depends, because sometimes, uh, as long as you have it in the specific model, because I'm sure they have more than one model that's being made uh, in 1910, so... Maybe if it specifically says Colt Frontier 6 shooter, then you can find the exact serial number or the serial number range. Usually that's what it pops up in. Um, but they also had Colt Lightnings as well, and then they had Colt Single Action Armies as well. So um, with the same serial number. Excuse me, probably not Colt Lightnings for sure. But, uh, you know... The, uh, the Colt Single Action Armies and the Frontier Six Shooters you're probably going to see in that serial number range. So that's probably what you're looking at. Just uh, just letting you know. But if it's you know pre-World War I, that's a pretty good guess, I would say, given the fact that it is definitely obviously a first generation because it's before World War II. Um, it is definitely going to be shot with black powder, uh, even though they had smokeless powder as early as 1898, 1895, and the 1890s. Um, you know, so that's just something that I'm going to do to kind of keep the history alive, if you will, and just uh, reminisce about the Old West. So, definitely nice. I'll go ahead and show you guys again one more time. Uh, this gun overall has a really nice patina to it. There really is no rust on it. The barrel is in what I would say average condition. Um, not perfect. It's got some mild pitting, I would say. Um, but it definitely has been used. 
by somebody good or bad. And as I said, it's got the two nicks on it right there, if you guys can see it. Just kind of neat, very intentionally put there. So it's gotten two of something in its lifetime. So, and then it kind of came to me. Um, so what are your questions as well? Um, I'd like to hear them in the comment section. It's just a very nice looking revolver. Uh, it fits in my holster, fits in my hand great. I have not shot it, as I said. I'll probably get to shooting it at some point. I'll definitely let you guys know how that goes. And, uh, you know, if you guys have any questions, let me know. It's pretty cool. Colt Frontier Six Shooter there. All right. So, I'll just go over it one more time here. Because I really didn't go over it well last time. Going down to the grip. You got the back strap, nice patina. You got the grip, very slim as I said. Going down to the, to the frame, the loading gate, functions. Nice, very nice color here. You may or may not be able to see it. Let me know if you see it. Frontier Six Shooter. It's just pretty nice. You know, it's very cool. All right. Well, anyway, you guys can always, uh, you know, request certain firearms of me. Uh, I try to post different firearms in my Facebook area so you guys can see all the previous videos. I have originals and I have repros as well. So uh, definitely a very proud moment to kind of show you this. So I'm really happy. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the replay. Description section is a link to our Patreon account if you feel like supporting us. Don't forget to buy me a coffee as well. Oh, it's cowgirls and cowboys. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. And if you're looking forward to the next video, I'll see you on down the trail. Have a good one.